Welcome to Decision Trees. After completing this lesson, you should be able to understand the pipeline's API for decision trees, describe pipeline's input and output columns, perform classification and regression with decision trees, and understand and use decision trees parameters. A decision tree is an effective non-parametric modeling method for different types of data. It can handle both continuous and categorical data. It can also help us identify markers that split our categories. MLLib's implementation of decision trees supports both binary and multi-class classification, as well as regression. It also supports both continuous and categorical features. In MLLib, the data is partitioned by rows allowing distributed training of decision trees. This implementation is then used by the pipeline's API for decision trees, which I'll introduce in this lesson. The Spark ML API for decision trees contains more functionalities than the original MLLib API. There is a separation of decision trees for classification and regression. We use data frames metadata to distinguish between continuous and categorical features. Now let's take a look at the inputs taken and the outputs produced by decision trees in the pipelines API. As inputs, there are the label and feature columns. If its corresponding parameter names are omitted, the API will look for its defaults, label and features in the input data frame. As outputs, there are the prediction, raw prediction and probability columns where the last two only apply for classification trees. If its corresponding parameter names are omitted, the API will append these columns with its default names to the resulting data frame. Notice that if I don't want to give a column to be appended, I just have to set its name as an empty string using the appropriate parameter name. We can load our data by creating a SQL context, giving us access to the data frame API and then importing the implicits we need for automatic data conversions. We then import the classes we need. This is a sample data set that comes with Spark. If you didn't get Spark from sources, you probably don't have it. From a Spark notebook, you can get it with the shell command wget. Remember, this will not work on Microsoft Windows boxes. Then we can load the data into a data frame using the machine learning utils.loadlibsvm file function and then calling to data frame on it. Next, we set up our input and output columns and then fit the data for the label indexer. From that, we get the label converter from it. Then we set up a feature indexer from vector indexer, which we will perform a fit call on with our input data. Next, we set up the pipeline of the data where the stages are derived from those values we just created and perform a random split to get our training data and test data values. To get our decision tree classifier, we create a model classifier by fitting our pipeline from the training data values and then we create the tree models by casting the data to an instance of a decision tree classification model and then print out the data. You may notice that the indexed label is presented as one, while label suggests zero and vice versa. Please note that by passing the model via the string indexer and label converter, Spark assigned its own alias to the labels provided. Hence, the prediction is also represented in Spark's own alias. The predicted label, however, returns a string value that represents the original names of the labels in the dataset. The same goes for the decision tree regressor. In the case of regression, remember that my pipeline had only two stages, the features indexer and the decision tree regressor. Similarly to our decision tree classifier, we get a decision tree regressor by creating a model regressor value from fitting our pipeline from the training data values. And like before, we create the tree models by casting the data to an instance of a decision tree regression model and print out the data. Getting results from the model, we have a printout of the data. Now let's take a look into all different parameters of decision trees. 
The parameters can be classified in three categories, problem specification, stopping criteria, and tunable parameters. I will start with the problem specification parameters. As their name suggests, they describe the problem and the data set. They should be properly specified and do not require tuning. This category of parameters include num classes, the number of classes in a classification problem, categorical features info, it's an optional parameter that specifies which features are categorical and how many categorical values each of those features can take. Although it is an optional parameter, if specified properly, it can lead to better performance. The parameters and the stopping criteria category determine when the tree stops building. The specification of these parameters need to be validated on held out test data, as they may lead to overfitting. This category of parameters include max depth, the maximum depth of a tree. If this parameter is increased, that is, if it is set to build deeper trees, the resulting model may be more expressive and more accurate but it will also be more costly to train and more likely to overfit. Min instances per node, the minimum number of instances the children node must receive for a node to be split further. It is commonly used in random forests as trees go deeper and may overfit, resulting in leaf nodes with only one instance each. Main info gain, the minimum information gain obtained with a split for a node to be split further. The information gain is the difference between the parent node impurity and the weighted sum of the two child nodes impurities. The impurity of a node is a measure of the homogeneity of the labels at that particular node. Finally, the tunable parameters. As their name suggests, these are parameters for fine tuning a model and they also need to be validated on held out test data as they too may lead to overfitting. This final category of parameters include max bins, the number of bins used when discretizing continuous features, being equal or greater than the maximum number of categories for any categorical feature. Max memory in MB, the amount of memory to be used for collecting sufficient statistics. Its default stands at 256 megabytes which will work in most scenarios. If increased, this parameter can lead to faster training since it allows fewer passes over the data. On the other hand, if increased too much, it may have decreasing returns as the amount of communication on each interaction also increases. Subsampling rate, the fraction of the training data used for learning the decision tree. This parameter is more relevant for training ensembles of trees like random forests. Impurity, the impurity measure used to choose between candidate splits. For classification problems, Gini impurity and entropy measures are supported. For regression problems, the only supported measure is the variance. Having completed this lesson, we should now be able to understand the pipelines API for decision trees, describe pipelines input and output columns, perform classification and regression with decision trees, and understand and use decision trees parameters.